Hello everybody, it's that time of day again. It's story time. I got my frumpy reading sweater on. I think I'm already here. A second, there, now I'm comfortable. I got to drink today. Hmm. Nice glass of cool water. Today, I'm going to read some Aesop's Fables. And they're by Aesop. Now, Aesop was a storyteller back in Greece. Lo, these many, many, many years ago. Long before you, long before me. And there's a lot of stories that, that have meaning. And they're all attributed to Aesop. So I will read a few of them now. There's hundreds of them, so we may read a few over the course of a couple days. Not all at once, though. Huh. Too many. So I got some reading glasses on. Got them up on the computer here, so let's begin. The Cock and the Pearl A cock was once strutting up and down the farmland among the hens, when suddenly he espied something shiny amid the straw. Ho ho, quoth he, that's for me, and soon rooted it out from beneath the straw. What did it turn out to be but a pearl that by some chance had been lost in the yard? You may be a treasure, quoth Master Cock, to men that prize you. But for me, I would rather have a single barley corn than a peck of pearls. Precious things are for those who can prize them. The next one is called The Wolf and the Lamb. Once upon a time, a wolf was lapping at a spring on a hillside. When, looking up, what should he see but a lamb just beginning to drink a little lower down? There's my supper, he thought. If only I can find some excuse to seize it. Then he called out to the lamb, How dare you muddle the water from which I am drinking? Nay, master, nay, said the lambikin. If the water be muddy up there, I cannot be the cause for it, for it runs down from you to me. Well then, said the wolf, why did you call me a bad name this time last year? That cannot be, said the lamb. I'm only six months old. I don't care, snarled the wolf. If it was not you, it was your father. And with that, he rushed upon the poor little lamb and ate her all up. But before she died, she gasped out, Any excuse will serve a tyrant. Let's see. The dog and the shadow. It happened that a dog got a piece of meat and was carrying it home in his mouth to eat it in peace. Now, on his way home, he had to cross a plank lying across a running brook. As he crossed, he looked down and saw his own shadow reflected in the water beneath. Thinking it was another dog with another piece of meat, he made up his mind to have that also. So he made a snap at the shadow in the water. But as he opened his mouth, a piece of meat fell out, dropped into the water, it was never seen. Beware lest you lose the substance by grasping at a shadow. Okay, what have we got here? The lion's share. The lion went once a-hunting along with the fox, the jackal, and the wolf. They hunted and they hunted, till at last they surprised a stag and soon took its life. Then came the question, how the spoil should be divided. Quarter me the stag, roared the lion. So the other animal skinned it and cut it into four parts. Then the lion took his stand in front of the carcass and pronounced judgment. The first quarter is for me in my capacity as king of beasts. The second is mine as arbitrator. Another share comes to me for my part in the chase. And as for the fourth quarter, well, as for that, I should like to see which of you will dare to lay a paw upon it. Humph, grumbled the fox as he walked away with his tail between his legs. But he spoke in a low growl. You may share the labors of the great, but you will never share the spoil. Wow. Okay, let's see what else we got. Okay, we'll read two more. The Wolf and the Crane. 
A wolf had been gorging on an animal he had killed, when suddenly a small bone on the meat stuck in his throat, and he could not swallow it. He soon felt terrible pain in his throat, and ran up and down, groaning and groaning, and seeking for something to relieve the pain. He tried to induce everyone he met to remove the bone. I will give you anything, said he, if you will take it out. At last the crane agreed to try, and told the wolf to lie on his side and open his jaws as wide as he could. Then the crane put in its long neck down the wolf's throat, and with his beak loosened the bone till at last it got out. Will you kindly give me the reward you promised? said the crane. The wolf grinned, showed his teeth, and said, Be content. You have put your head inside a wolf's mouth and taken it out again in safety. That ought to be reward enough for you. Gratitude and greed do not go together. The Man and the Serpent A countryman's son, by accident, trod upon a serpent's tail, which turned and bit him, so that he died. The father, in the rage, got an axe, and pursuing the serpent, cut off part of its tail. So the serpent, in revenge, began stinging several of the farmer's cattle, and caused him severe loss. Well, the farmer thought it best to make up with the serpent, and brought food and honey to the mouth of its lair, and said to it, Let's forget and forgive. Perhaps you were right to punish my son, and take vengeance on my cattle. But surely I was right in trying to revenge him. Now that we are both satisfied, why should we not be friends again? No, no, said the serpent. Take away your gifts. You can never forget the death of your son, nor I the loss of my tail. Injuries may be forgiven, but not forgotten. Well, I think that's all we'll read today. You have yourself a good day. You take care of one another. You take care of yourself, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.